What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Torchbearers Podcast. I'm here with Josh Dobbs. We're just talking ball today, man. Just talking shop. Talking life, man. Life's been nuts. So, Dobbs, one of the last times we were recording a podcast with Tim Burchett, you get up in the middle of the podcast and leave, and Thomas and I are texting each other, like, where the hell is Dobbs? Like, what, what's going on? And I'm like, w- did he just quit on us? He came back after the podcast and told us you'd been traded to the Cardinals. And I was thinking in my head, okay, Dobbs is going to have a chance to start, and that's now going to be two teams that he's been sent to and had to start in like a week of no practice. And yep. now it's happened for the third time. There's just <laughs> no way in NFL history there's been another quarterback that's had to start three games with only a week of prep. Tell us about when you get the call from Minnesota, your emotions, and then walk us through the week. So I'm in Arizona last Sunday. We play Baltimore, right? Game ends. We lose by seven, 31-24. We're in the locker room. JG gets off his podium. He does media before I do. And he says, I'm starting for the Cardinals in Cleveland the next week. So there's a ton of questions like about the game, but obviously like going back to Cleveland, this was a team that you just got traded here from. What are those emotions that you're going, going through and everything? So I leave the stadium, go home. I had uh, my fam out, went to dinner. I just gotten my furniture out to Arizona the Monday, like the week before, like the Monday before that game. So just finally so got you, settled. You had seven days of furniture. The, seven days of like my furniture. Like uh, oh, my dog Jet just got out to Arizona. He he was uh, he was sunbathing. Just threw him in the pool to see if he could swim. You know, like just enjoying like the desert, the Arizona sun, and everything. <laughs> finally settled for the season. All right. So that was Monday, and then we played Sunday. We played Baltimore. So I go to the facility on Monday, and JG, the head coach in Arizona, calls me to his office. And he says, hey, um, we're going to start Clayton Toon in Cleveland. Um, and this is leading up to Kyler's return. I'm not sure when he comes back, but I think he comes back soon. So they want to see what the rookie can do. So I'm like, okay, like I understood. I was upset with it, but I understood like just the situation the franchise was in at that moment. So I went home, talked to my agent. Uh, I just told him about the situation. Uh, went to sleep. Woke up Tuesday morning with a text from my agent saying, hey, you could be traded today because it's the trade deadline. <laughs> and, th- and, and listen to this. When I had my meeting with uh, JG in Arizona, he looked at me in the face and he said, you're not getting traded. You're not being released. You're going to be here in Arizona. I was like, okay, cool. And so then I woke up to that text saying, all right, the trade deadline's in four hours. You could be traded. You could go to Minnesota or go back to Cleveland. I was like, this, today, today's about to be nuts. It's like, pack a bag just in case. So I ate breakfast. I was chilling at the house. Um, Wait, and so you, you, packed, you packed a bag to leave? I didn't pack a bag. I did not. He told oh, me okay. to pack a bag, but I was like, if it happens, like, I've been through this. So Tuesday's an off day. And the crazy thing about it is I usually always go in on the off day. Like, I like to just go and hit the sauna, hit the tubs. Uh, but just given the situation, I was like, all right, I'm just going to chill at home, you know, just kind of just enjoy the morning uh, just because I don't know what's going to happen today. So I'm just going to chill at home. And so I woke up like at 9 a.m. Um, to my agent saying you could be traded and the trade deadlines at 1 p.m. Um, Pacific time. So I eat breakfast. I chill. He calls me back at 11. He says, you're getting traded to Minnesota. <laughs> so I said, Okay. So then, like, all the emotions of, like, the last 36 hours, whatever was told to you, something different has happened, right? Like, you were yeah, told you're starting that's... in Cleveland the next week against your previous team, and then the next day you were told you're not starting, but you're not getting traded. And then the next day you wake up, you're being told that, oh, you are being traded, and you're traded to Minnesota. So, Dobbs, tell me a little bit real quick before you, you had just got a place in Arizona, right? Yeah. So, so I'll talk, talk to you about this story. So obviously when you get a, when you get a place, right, like in the NFL, that's the hardest thing, especially if you're on a one year deal, you know, For sure. if you're in a city that you could spend the off season in, you might get a place for the off season. If you're in a city like a Northern state where you know, you're not going to be there during the off season, then you're going to get a, get a place through this, through this season. So when I got traded to Arizona, 
I was like, okay, like the team when you get traded, the team has to pay for um, your le- your like two months of lease in your previous city. So Arizona paid for September and, and October lease in Cleveland, and they had to pay moving costs for me to move all my stuff to Arizona, my cars to Arizona, everything. <laughs> so the team take care, takes care of that when you get traded. So because the team was taking care of that, I was like, all right, I'm gonna be in Arizona. Like I'm on a year d- deal, uh, one year deal. I know at least I'll, I'll be here through the season, and it's Arizona, so I'm probably going to spend the offseason in Arizona as I go into free agency again next year. So, like, let me find a spot that, you know, I would enjoy for the season, I'll be comfortable in, but also would enjoy through the offseason until I figure out, like, whether I'm going to be here next, next season or somewhere else, right? So I went through the whole process of looking for spots, right? Like, seeing every side of town in, in the time that I had, you know, seeing different places to rent, like whatever, like going around the town, seeing like, okay, should I do like an investment property? I was like checking off all the boxes going through the entire process of like, where do I want to live in Arizona? So I finally found it. Like it took me probably two, three weeks to find a spot just because I also was preparing to start. Like I wasn't, it was not like I was just preparing to play, I was preparing to start, which is a whole different yeah. uh, mental hurdle. To, to conquer. And so I finally found a spot like late September. And um, I was like, okay, I can move in mid, I can move in at the beginning of October. And then my stuff is going to be here, um, like middle to end of October, like the week before Halloween, my stuff could finally get shipped out from Cleveland. It's like perfect. So I got settled. I was like, oh, we got a home game, we play the Ravens, I'm gonna have to fam out like the house is going to have like my furniture, everything set up, it's going to be comfortable, had the fam all there. And so we enjoyed that week, like home game and everything. And then you wake up Tuesday morning and then you're traded to another city. So that's, <laughs> that's the craziness of it all. So you went through all the work of finding a spot and everything. And uh, yeah, you know, could have saved, saved a little more energy, you know. So are football. you going to have that lease? Are you going to be able to get out of that lease or are you going to be paying it for the rest of the year? Oh, so when you're in the league, the thing that you always do, no matter what your situation is, you always put in a trade clause in your leases. Like always, like every lease I put in a trade clause. Even even when I got traded, I still put in a trade clause in the lease because you just never know in the NFL. And so it just always protects you, just a level of protection so that if something happens, you can get out of the lease without having to pay extra months um, due to a job transfer. So. I'll be able to get out that lease as I was able to also get out the lease in Cleveland. So that's two leases I've broken in the last three that's months. That's insane. <laughs> dude, dude, I, that's smart though. The man. life part the of league it is just so unpredictable, man. It's so unpredictable. How much how much stuff did you bring with you? Bro, I packed one bag. Um, <laughs> I packed one suitcase. Oh, I have crazy, probably like man. five pairs of shoes. I have a ton of uh, sweatpants. Shout out to Jocelyn, she's a G. I was packing for the flight. And um, I would like it's a mental. It was a mental roller coaster. Like I'll be honest, it was a mental oh, roller man. coaster. So I'm sitting there packing for the flight. I'm going through my suitcase. Like I just lived in a hotel out of a suitcase for a month and a half to start the season. So I'm just like I'm throwing stuff in there like a three year old kid, like having like a temper tantrum, just throwing it in the bag, like not holding <laughs> anything. And she's looking at me. She's like, you know, you're gonna get to Minnesota and you're not gonna have anything that you want. Like you actually need to pack the stuff that you need. So she like went through the entire closet, folded stuff up, balled it up, like made sure I was actually packed. So thanks to her, like if it was up to me, I would have like two sweatpants, one jacket, one hoodie, two <laughs> shoes, and I was just gonna rough it. But she made sure I had like all my underwear, socks. I got like a couple outfits for games and stuff, but all in one suitcase. Uh, then I obviously got my camera, my computer, and my iPad. That's about it. Jeez. All the essentials. We were flying back last night, and everyone was showing on the plane because um, vibes were high when you win, obviously. And I was talking to one of the equipment managers, and it's just like, you know, everything that you go through in life prepares you just for the next opportunity that you don't even know what you're about to go through. And it's like just like going through the whole experience last year, and then going to Nashville and just dealing with those emotions all have prepared me for this, for this opportunity and this opportunity prepared me for whatever's next. So it's pretty cool. Like when you look back at it, but in it, sometimes it's you cool. kind of lose sight at it, you know, no doubt. And I, I hope that I can remind you cause I, I, I literally, and also in the, it's not like you just did nothing in the off season. 
when you were learning how to fly a plane is where I, <laughs> is where I realized Whoa. it's, oh, yeah, that's it's 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 one day at a time. What can you do one day to get you where you want to be? And that's shoot, you do that off the field in the way you approach that, too. So, I mean, it's to me, you know, knowing you, I, I just knew it was a matter of time to where there wasn't going to be a, an opportunity where it just folded you because it hasn't so far. I want to I want to get to what everybody's been asking me, my friends and people that I've talked to, what happens on the Wednesday when you don't know anybody's name? You, you see the facility <laughs> out there. Are you walking into rooms like, hey, I'm, what, what happened that yeah, first this, Wednesday? It, so this is how it goes. So I woke up Wednesday, and you got to think, like, you're getting on a moving train. That's what people don't see. It's not like it's week one or OTAs where, yeah. Yeah, where, they're, where they're like, hey, like, Here's the intro to the offense. You know, no, like this is week nine of the season. And <laughs> the installs are done, like, man. Installs are done. Like, hey, yo, we're on to, we just beat the Packers. We're on to Atlanta. This is what we're doing. And this is where we're going. And so you're getting on a moving train. So when you wake up Wednesday, this is the hard part. You got to go through, every time you go to a new team, you got to go through the full medical process. So you have to... You know, go meet the doctors, go do physicals, go get x-rays of any old injuries, like all that stuff. You do that every single team, no matter how many times you've done it or when the last time you did it. Do physicals, do it all. So, like, that takes up, you know, the first half of the day. So, even on Wednesday, like, you get you get to work and you're getting on a moving train, but then you also get to work late. Like, you miss half the day. Like, you miss all the installs of first and second down game plan and like personnel and going through defenses because you were doing logistical stuff that it takes to join a new roster. So you finish all that and then like you're going into meeting rooms and the hardest part is just making sure you don't sit in someone's seat. So you see, you walk into, <laughs> That's so true. You walk into the uh, unit meeting and you're looking around, you're like, all right, where, where's the open seat? Because I don't want to take anyone's seat. Like, they walk in, and then they're looking at me crazy because, one, I'm a new face, they don't know me, and now I'm sitting in their seat. Like, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. So you're sitting like, okay, like, how does this go? Then once you once you figure out where to sit down at, then you're just – it's like you were I – I told the analogy yesterday after the game. It's like you you were taking AP Spanish all year, and you, you took in all the intro levels to get up to AP Spanish, and then someone threw you into AP French class like the next <laughs> week and told you you have to take the exam on Sunday. That's exactly how it is. So you're just sitting there, whatever you can retain, you're retaining it. I take a lot of notes, so taking a lot of notes. And then you spend, spend a lot of time with assistant coaches and QB coaches afterwards, like going back and trying to get up, get up to speed on all the information that you've missed. I heard some people talk about how, you, and, and you said this too, um, you took some extra time after practice to just sit down and spend five hours looking over stuff. What, what are you looking over to the average fan when you're trying yeah. to figure out how to learn an offense? So what I'm looking at is you're going, I'm, look, I'm going through like formations. I'm going through early installs. I'm going through, you know, old games, just getting a feel for, the players on the team because that's the hard part like it's not like I'm gonna get reps with them in practice before the game like I understand the situation so it's trying to watch see how they come out breaks see how they run their routes to get you know, mental reps as much as I can before the game comes and then from there it's you know for me kind of like just processing like what information do I need to know that's going to allow me to you know, execute a game plan and what information do I not need to know that would be great to know, but with all the information I'm trying to get through, it's like I got to sift through the, the most essential information of like, yo, like what's the snap count? Where are my eyes starting? What is he running? Where do I start looking? What's my footwork? And then like play football from there. That was a crazy thing. Like I, it was not like I was slotted to play. You know, Jaron started the game um, and he went down in the first quarter, um, but it was his show. And so I was there just in case something happened. And so obviously something happened, but it was good to still have, you know, people, you know, pouring into you, wanting you to succeed, like wanting to turn over every single stone for something that could happen. Like that, that was really important. That was something I really took note of last week. I think at some point when you were, you know, like when you're, I was just like picturing, you know, when you're trying to like get people to run a play, 
and you don't know it all. Like at some point, it just it, do you have like a football like you do in backyard football, and you're just like, all right, you're gonna do this, you're gonna, you're gonna run up, and then you're gonna go to the right. Like here, you're gonna do a curl. <laughs> like I mean, I, 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 there, it just blows were, my mind that I mean, and also too, like play. there has to be. Are there also instances? You know, I heard that every ever every sports announcer said like he doesn't have time to even know the people's names on the team. Has any that had had that happened at all? Any literal examples of that? Like where you had to go, like, "Hey, big guy," or "Hey, buddy," <laughs> this, is what, this is what you gotta do. I mean, yeah, like yes and no. Like being on a football field, right? Like everyone's already looking at the quarterback, so it's not like you're not getting the attention that you need to to have to communicate. But there were times like there was a couple plays in the huddle where I would say the play, and then luckily they happened on TV timeouts. I would say the play, and then. You know, whatever receiver, I would to ask them just to, like, confirm what route they have. Like, like you have this, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Just making sure, like, you have this, right? Like, just, like, talking through it just to make sure I was picturing it and seeing it correctly. So, Dobbs, just so I'm making sure I'm getting this right, you had zero reps with the first team offense in practice, right? Yeah, like, you know how it goes. So, the two quarterback, the backup quarterback, he only does the scout team reps. So he works yeah. with, you know, the guys that aren't playing, the second O-line, uh, some practice squad receivers, some active receivers, but the guys that are getting the bulk load of the workload are with the ones. And so, yeah, I didn't, we didn't step, I didn't step in a huddle, didn't go through a cadence, yeah. nothing <laughs> throughout the week that. because cause they're also getting a rookie ready to make his first start on the road in Atlanta. So he was getting a yeah. ton of attention and making sure he was prepared to go. So, yeah, yeah. you're just – it was just, it was like one of those. So, I was thinking like from an offensive line perspective, what did you sort of tell the guys? Because for me, I mean, when Pat comes in, he has a different cadence, even back to when Chad yeah. Henney, Shane Bouchelle, Blaine currently, Chris, like it's all a different feel. So how did you sort of get your center ready? I thought I saw a clip on Twitter where you're literally taking like snaps on the sideline before. Like what was sort of the mentality with the offensive line going into it? So Jared goes down, Garrett runs to the sideline. Like it was third down. <laughs> But he thought it was he thought it was second down. He thought I was about to go in the game. He runs to the sideline. So, all right, let's get us some snaps. I was like, bro, it's third down with the kick field goal. Like, we're good. Takes a breather, get some water. Then we have the whole line gather around, and I just go through all the cadences that are in the game plan so they can hear yeah. it. Now, the, now, here's the hard part. Cadences, there are some crossover, but as you said, like, we're all different in how we say it. And we try to be the same, but we're all different. So the way I say one cadence it was the exact same cadence I used in Cleveland. Um, but the way I say it in Cleveland is too slow for the way that they say it here. And so, you know, <laughs> like if I, if I take too long on the cadence and everyone's jumping off sides, yeah, so I did in my head, remember like, okay, when, I, when we're on this cadence, even though this is how you've done it for two years now, when this cadence comes up, you have to say it quicker so that it's on their timing and not your old timing. It was like stuff like that was going on. Like you can simulate on the sideline, but now when the bullets are flying, they're like, all right, yeah, like you got to make a check of the strong safeties here, the three techs here. Okay, and now I go on this cadence. Then, it, then that's when it's like, okay, like you got to literally <laughs> process every single step of, the, step of it in your head and slowly go through it. But also you're on a 40-second clock, so you don't want to get delayed of game, <laughs> false start, or anything else. So it was, it was a lot of moving parts. I think that's what makes the performance so spectacular. You think about all the moving parts and intricacies that went into your performance. I mean, one small misstep, let's say you send the O-line this Whoa. way, the cadence is off, off sides, you get smacked by backside nickel coming off the edge. Like, there's so much that goes into it, man. And for you to step into the, the organization with the Vikings and have that much of a performance, I mean, it's incredible, to say the least. I mean, I'm thinking about myself. I got thrown in a position like that, uh, a different team different game plan of the week like you said you have to learn it rapid fire and you have to do it well but to be a quarterback and do it I mean it's nothing short of spectacular tell me about pre-snap in your ear what is going on and then when that cuts off what is going through your head so quarterbacks we got helmets they have mics in them the coach can talk to us all the way down to 15 seconds on the play clock normal play starts with a 40 second play clock if it, the ball was, if it was like a turnover or starting a new drive, the clock starts with 25 seconds. So after play would come in, I was on the wristband for most plays. Some plays I wasn't. Um, and so 
the hardest plays are like a third down play. Third down play, it's like a paragraph. It's probably, tw no exaggeration, 20 words long. And so you're trying to spit it out as fast as possible to get to the line. So I'll get to the line of scrimmage. Coach like, all right, say this play, like get out of the huddle as fast as you can when we get to the line of scrimmage. And then he's giving me reminders of the play, right? Like if I'm going to change the play for different looks, if – you know, my progression is going to take me somewhere based on what the defense is giving me, like what protection calls to do based on what the defense is presenting. He's trying to give me as much information as possible before the play clock hits 15. And then once it hits 15, you're on, you're on your own. So you got to think, like, if you get the play clock in, like, late, late, call in late, like some calls always call in, come in late. You get to, to the line at 12 seconds, you know, I'm out there, like, whatever I studied, I have to make sure I, I knew it. So, like, um, KO was communicating with me as much as he could. And that helped. Like, we were able to do a lot of no huddle. We were able to just go straight to the line after the play. And now we're able to see the looks the defense is doing and, and be able to communicate from there. Is, is he literally saying in your ear, though, Jordan's running to go, this is what's – or is he speaking to you in, like, the play terminology? Yeah, he's like, he's like you, got, you, got, you got a corner and a flat on this side. You oh, got that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, like, nice, it's, like, it's like Madden. But it would be like this. It would be like this. He's like, all right, all right, on your right, you gotta, you gotta go, you gotta out, and you gotta cuts out. Wait, you know is, there, I mean? is, like, is NFL regulate that, that? Like, is it a hard? Yeah, yeah fifteen seconds. Yeah. Fifteen seconds cuts wow. out. Trey, after he was leaving Germany, was texting me asking what was going on in the game, and I think all of your friends and fans at the beginning of the game were absolutely ourselves panicking because we were like why does this keep happening to Dobbs he's got to get into just the, the worst situation with the week and then he just gets killed and I was texting Trey I'm like dude he's getting he's getting killed like this is such and then I text Trey back 40 minutes later and something happens what did you just start getting more comfortable what the hell happened after those first few drives this is literally how it happens you're st I'm standing on the sideline Jaron goes down boom so when he goes down they look at you and say, all right, Josh, you're in. And so what's the first thing that's going to go through your mind? You're going through, like, every play on the call sheet. But then you're also thinking logistically, okay. Listen, then you're thinking logistically, okay, like, I got to break the huddle. I got to communicate. I got to get my cadence. And then after all of that, you're also like, hey, what defense are they running? Are they pressuring? Where am I supposed to go with the football? You know, like, there's a lot going on, especially when you were, you were going through it on the sideline, but you're not in it. And so, like, the first drive, of course, we get the ball on the five-yard line coming yeah, out. Yeah, that's oh, – so, When I saw Back that, I was up, just – I was literally just ah. – I take a sack in the end zone. Like, I think that was the first time I've ever done that. Take a sack in the end zone, get a safety. Happens this football. Second drive, fumble. They get the ball on the one-yard line. And this is what I was talking about. Like, I know I'm going to get a lot of praise for the situation. The only reason I was in that situation – was literally because of like how well we were playing as a team. Like I put us in two tough situations. Safety, kick the ball to them, they get no points. Then I fumble, they get them on the one yard line and they have to settle for a field goal. Like those two That's play, huge. those two, That's those massive. two transitions were crucial in allowing us to get our feet wet. Because instead of it being them going up 14 points, they scored five points from those two events instead of 14. So that's huge. And then from there, it was, okay, like, we got the first first down. It was like, all right, everyone's settled in. You know, it's just football. I'm going to communicate as fast as I can. We're going to get to the line of scrimmage, and then we'll figure it out from there. Everyone started getting in a flow, and then we're able to just to go out and play, communicate, do whatever we needed to do as an offense to still be productive. Uh, but, like, our defense held it down for us to be in that situation. That pass to Jordan was – and that catch was a uh, whole shot. Did you, oh, yeah, yeah. did you so really crazy. not pra like throw to him at all during the week? The only time I threw to the receivers were, was in pregame. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that two point conversion throw looked like it was like you, you that was scripted in practice 55 times. Like it was literally straight. Yeah. I mean, like, not, just like not necessarily the concept of the play, just like the execution on a scramble. Like, that's. Scramble drill is you do it all the time. That's how you know the tendencies of where people like to run, you know, like where yeah, they so can Yeah, so what I learned is we can. practice it here every Friday. We practiced it last Friday. They're like, yeah, we practice scramble drill every Friday. I was like, nice. And it showed up in the game. So <laughs> like, stuff like that was really cool. But, like, to your point, yeah, 
my first my first time throwing like live routes was in pregame warmups. And they, they were out there like, Bro, that's not nice stop. <laughs> Trey, where was your game yesterday? We were in Germany. The Dutch the Deutschland. Yeah, Germany. It was awesome. Uh what an experience. First time I ever traveled outside of the country. So oh that was, wow, dude. Yeah, Europe first spot. So it was really cool. Uh we ended up leaving on a Thursday night. Uh we had a practice that day. Took off nine hour flight to Germany. Slept the whole time, so I got lucky there. Uh but as soon as we landed, that everyone was telling you to get adjusted to the time for, uh change, don't go to sleep. So just dog tired, straight into a practice, got finished with that and you know, I was able to just explore Frankfurt a little bit. And I got to say, it was really an eye-opening experience. It was really cool and really enjoyed my time there. Uh, I yeah. thought the people in Germany were very nice. Like, everything I saw was good and positive for the most part. Uh, the food. At big guy, fat man alert. The food was good, man. Schnitzel. Uh, they had uh, potato Schnitzel. sausage, beef Ooh. sausage, sauerkraut was really good. But it was a good experience. And I think this off season, you know, as I go to Europe again, some part of Germany or even going to Japan, I think I'm really looking forward to the experience. You get yeah, you get you you get you a nice uh, five XL pair of leader hosen out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So I thought about buying some leader hosen off uh, Amazon for the game, dude. That would have been nah, dude wearing nah, that, that walking into the stadium. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, nah, it was cool though, man. It, it was it was really cool. So great getting over there. Was it like did they know football or were they soccer with an affinity to learn about American football? Yeah, so Germany definitely, uh, well, for instance, we trained at the uh, National Soccer Facility for Germany, so that was really cool. I'd oh, say awesome. soccer is definitely obviously going to be the, the biggest sport, uh, but I think the German people are hungry for football. I got to talk about the, the stadium game day experience. Yeah, I think the Chiefs were the number one team in Germany, and it was almost like a home game. They're doing the chant before it, they're hitting the tomahawk. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're pretty much they're rooting us that. on, but... Do the yeah, yeah, that was, oh, 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 like, whole time, man, it was dope, it was dope, That's and, uh, you know, it was really, it was a cool, unique experience, uh, like I said, so y'all I have the, the chief with the, with, with that drum that y'all bring yeah. out in no, we, we didn't bring the, all right, national anthem, you know, right at the end, home of the Chiefs, the entire stadium saying <laughs> it, I'm sitting crazy. around like, oh, it's a home game, let's get it, I think that the question is, like, could you do that? How how often could you do that trip? Because that's physically that's that you know like I bet it's rewarding. You're well, on the other side of yeah. it, but like, like that's dude. You're in Germany four days ago, <laughs> yeah. like two or two well, days. Ago. Nah, yes, a couple right. hours ago, man. <laughs> but I mean, not in, in the period of four days, you're there and gone, and you sit, went through a practically a car wreck on your body, yeah. and then you just come right back. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, I, I think uh, one would I want to do that multiple times a year. Uh, for my body's sake, probably not. Uh, I think Dobbs said it best. Like, obviously, being being a person that's gone to the Super Bowl, that's sort of like the closest team to like the environment. Subtle flex. Yeah. Well, no, not like that, <laughs> man. But, but yeah, a little subtle flex. But no, just like it, it is probably the closest thing to like that's not a regular game feel that you can get. It almost had like a championship game atmosphere leading up to it. The nine hour flight sucks, man. I'm six foot five, three hundred plus pounds. <laughs> That, that, virgin, that virgin, virgin, that virgin Atlantic, that yeah. virgin fir, first seat, first class seat, don't do it justice, yeah, does it? Yeah, no, dude, it's, it's still rough. You're sitting in a confined space for nine hours. I don't care what you do, yeah. you're not going to be comfortable. But, you know, they, they had us set up really well, nicely. Uh, my only gripe and complaint was uh, if you are above, like, 300 pounds, your seat wouldn't recline while you're sitting on it. So I had to oh. get up and put it so the motor couldn't hold me. But uh, other than that, man, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, no. wait! Like, there's like a physical, like there's like a li- like a limitation on the device in the chair. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sitting there. We, all right, I'll, I'll break it down. So Thursday, uh, we obviously get to the airport. We go through customs. We do everything we do. And I'm sitting in my seat, and I'm sitting next to Creed, and we're like pressing the button to recline. We're like, we're looking at each other, like, dude, is this, if this thing doesn't go down back, we're, we're screwed. We can't lay down this whole flight. So we're talking. We're just pressing it, spamming it, spamming it, spamming it. Finally, the flight attendant comes up. He's like, hey, sir, is there a problem? And I'm just like, yeah, ma'am, I think my seat might be broken. She's just like, oh, well, you know, sometimes uh, you might have to stand up for it uh, and then <laughs> press it, you know, just sometimes with the width and stuff. She's basically trying to say in her nicest way, no fat ass, you can't recline while you're sitting. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah, bro. So I get up, recline it, I'm good to go, right? So that that was, it was funny, but, you know, it's just those small things. Trey, when you landed... 
Did were you talking? Did any of your Chiefs friends or buddies talk about seeing Dobbs play? I mean, yeah, I talked to Pat a little bit on the plane, uh, just in front of me. We we're just talking about you, obviously going from different teams. But in the beginning of the game, we we're like, dang man, he's in a bad situation. Then you know, by the time we landed, we we're like, hey, Dobbs pulled it out. He balled, man. That's dope. Let's go. That's my guy. We uh we spent time at the Peyton Manning camp uh, yep. back in college. Uh, Pat is one of the funniest human beings ever funniest overall. so that's my that's my guy make sure you make sure you tell myself what's up i appreciate that i appreciate the love sure. it's cool it's cool seeing all that like just given the crazy circumstances but receiving the love just from players teammates people around the league just understanding the nature of this beast and gauntlet called the nfl man like we're just trying to conquer it one week at a time you know no matter what city we in we, we still trying to make the most of every opportunity we're given so i appreciate the love Skull. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that chant before the game is hard. It's that so chant fire. Before the game I can't is wait. So fire. With the drums, this do, week. Do, 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 do. Skull. <laughs> that is live. I can't wait. Uh, Dobbs, I got some text. People asking me that. What's on your head right now, and where can they get it? Oh, Astro Dobbs hat. This is the new edition. This year, drop Astro merch pro is on my instagram twitter facebook linkedin TikTok, whatever social media you got the links on there y'all can go snag it appreciate the love so um most athletes right they do their merch but they outsource it they got someone else doing it for me man it's all mom and pop so every single order i just text my dad and go yo dad you got a couple orders you gotta get in the mail tomorrow so my dad is downstairs right now um back in alpharetta He's he turning over hat <laughs> orders right now. So, um, yeah, we got to put my man to work. He retired a couple of years ago. So, my man is looking for some work. So, let's make sure we, Back get, to we work. give it to him. Back to That's work, right. baby. Astro Dobbs hats live. Link below this video, man. Swipe up. Check it out. Support the kid. Uh, appreciate the love, man.